Well, what's up out there? Love them knives here. We've got the Field Bro. Bro. And here it is. This is the box that comes in. Uh, it's These are made by Real Steel Knives. And this is a collaboration between Real Steel, if you want to, who is Amare or Amir Knives, however you want to pronounce that. And it's between Real Steel and a German uh, company. And I think Yuli Henneke is involved in this. In fact, I know he is. I think he probably designed this knife was the hint hint that I got. But I think they said it's the Amir or Amari team that did it. The Field Bro. And also, by the way, this is in black right here. VG10 Blade but on drop and i'll give you a link below my own affiliate link below where you can order this knife on drop now you're not going to get this until like late november i think but instead of uh whatever they sell for normally and normally online these are going for around 95 dollars talk about that later but 50 bucks and, and it's that natural G10. So I definitely jumped on, on this. I'm, I'm going to get at least one of these. Okay. Uh, they're lightweight. They got a flat grind. They're really, I mean, that's a really usable blade. Let me see if it'll cut anything. I think if I had to bet, I'd say yes. Yeah, absolutely. But check the blade out. I mean, if this isn't just a good EDC carry knife, I don't know what is. And then they call it, uh, I think one of the retailers online referred to this as a slide lock or an axis type lock. So, I mean, that patent has expired a while back for Benchmade. So there's been knives coming out with this. And yes, I like it. I like it. Here's the deal. It's not a liner lock. It's not a flipper. Okay. And it's not a frame lock where they take a saw and saw down here and down. You know, I mean, sometimes it's nice to have the back scale look as good as the front scale. That's just kind of a thing with me. You've got a lanyard, the area, okay, this goes right through. No backspacer. It's an open design. Uh, and you can go right or left hand. Deep carry. Now... They did machine an area in for the pocket clip. Where they missed is going with flat screws here. That would have been an extra goodie. And, you know, I like the flat screws. Now, they didn't machine an area in here on my Vexor from Civivi. But I'm just saying that that would be good. Okay. So, check this out. My banter from Wee Knives machined an area in plus use flat screws look at the opening there look at the opening here it's more restrictive so if you want to bitch and moan okay uh that's that's one nick that uh you know i have when i i look at a knife that has a deep carry clip otherwise this is really easy to use and it's centered up nice Kicks right open. You can probably middle finger flick it too from the back side. Uh, looks like access from the back, but not from the front for disassembly. And we will disassemble this. And of course, like a reinforced area with the steel, which we'll look at uh, a bit more when we take this apart. But I'm expecting this to look pretty much exactly like an access lock, which I've, I've done knives that have an access type lock before I've disassembled bunches of them so there we go number four five zero this has got VG 10 blade so it's real stainless it's not D2 and I've you know I've done enough D2 darling I'm ready to get away from that wagon now let's kick it over here and take a look at how eh, 3.3 ounces so that's not bad. It's like 7.7 .7 inches overall length, 3.3 inch blade, and 3.3 ounces at 93.5, with a lot of threes in there, 93.5 grams. 
And let's throw out my PM3. Okay. Not far off. Not far off, but this one's a little bit bigger. I think this is a three and a seven. Let's kick the tape over here. Yeah, this is three and a quarter at least, and then you could argue 3.3. .3. Over here, 7.65 to 7.7 .7 in there at about 19 and a half centimeters. And of course, you're at about 85 millimeter blade length. So a lot of the knives I carry, I like to have like not 85, but 90 millimeter or longer. But in this case, I think this is fine. I think it's fine. It's really a light carry, really nice grippy G10 scales here. How about the design flow? Yeah. And he was hinting, uh, Jamie at Real Steel, who was messaging me about this, said, I said, who's the designer? And he goes, who do you think? <laughs> and I'm going, Yuli Henneke? So, I mean, that was my guess, and he never told me I was wrong. But it's the team at Amare or Amare Knives. And there you go. Uh, blade to handle length. That's pretty darn good right there. So, sharp, nice. Decent uh, blade steel. I mean, they're using VG10 on a lot of Spyderco knives still. So, hey, nothing wrong with that. Nice deep carry pocket clip. And you guys get, you know, right or left hand. And if you're left-handed, where are you getting hurt? I mean, this is ambidextrous. These are ambidextrous. These thumb studs. You know, you're just as good left hand as you are right hand on this. So that's nice. Because even if you have a left hand pocket clip on a liner lock or a frame lock, the frame or liner are still a right hand preference type thing. This, nah, it's not that way at all. So where's my balance? Let's get the balance on here. Okay, we're good. That's not bad. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And the ergos, they make a lot of sense too. This is really neutral in here and they're not giving you a bunch of finger choils and stuff. You can put the first one right there. The rest of them fit right on there. You've got enough handle. This knife is long enough. You got a long enough handle to get all your fingers on here. There's no jimping on top of the blade, but there is jimping up here. So that's good. Gives you a little bit more traction. And like I was saying before, I mean, look at that. There, there's traction there as well. No problem there. Nothing fancy with the hardware overall. It's pretty basic stuff. Let's take a look at uh, blade stock. Ah, three millimeter. It's pretty standard. 0.11. Yeah, for a knife like this, that'd be about what I'd have expected as well. 0.48 at 12.3 millimeters. So. Yeah, it's about the same thickness as the Paramilitary 2. This is not the PM2, but this is the PM3. But it's about the same thickness. This is a 0.45, so this is just slightly uh, slimmer than the Field Bro. And, you know, I don't see any way you can really cut yourself, so not really a way to... Uh, get your finger in contact that blade there or really here either so you're pretty well protected these standoffs look pretty sturdy nothing nothing uh problematic there at all but once again natural g10 yeah i and me and my little pot of dye you know this could be purple this could be blue this could be red so, I mean, that, that always gives you that opportunity. Uh, and at $50 a piece, I don't see where you're getting hurt. And, you know, the bug out, it's kind of in that range. It's a little bit bigger than the bug out. So, but, and it's, you know, this one's at $94 or $5, the way this one sits right now. But get it from White Mountain and you're not paying tax. You've been paying tax, I have, on some of the places, including Amazon, and that kills you right there. There's another 8 or $9 plus uh, shipping. 
So you get free shipping, you don't pay tax, and 10% off with the LTK discount code. So where does this end up at $95? Then you're at about $85, $87 all in, delivered. So no, uh, if, if the uh, Benchmade bug out's worth 115, is this worth 87? Yeah, because the S30V on the bug out doesn't really overly impress me. I'm sorry. I, it's not that it doesn't perform well. It's just super steels. I like a user knife and I like to be able to sharpen them uh, easily and strop them back to an edge. So the user steels are pretty attractive to me when I use them because uh, I don't care that it holds an edge longer. I prefer that it's easier to sharpen and there's always a balance there, always a balance. But that's a nice blade right there, shape for a lot of different things you could do. And it doesn't look too delicate at the tip either. Time to get crazy with the dirt rag behind us. And uh, I don't know when the last time that was washed. Uh, my wife, she'll catch it and go, wow, what the heck's wrong with you? Oh, that wasn't hard. I mean, there was no thread locker on that sucker right there. Whew. That came right off. So let's get the rest of these out of here. Come on, field bro. Oh, jumped right out. No, you're not going to escape. They like to jump off my table and hide in the carpeting in here. I wish it was a tile floor sometimes. But these screws are coming right out real easy. And I, I don't know if I want to separate this liner from the scale. I need to take this pocket clip with me. So we will. I'm going to steal it off of here. But these are not jacked on so strong. Ooh, it was a Spyderco knife I was into the other day. And oh, baby, they jacked those screws on like holy moly crazy well this this got something on it these screws i just dumped off of here yeah a little bit of red thread locker but that wasn't that serious let's take this off oh, there goes another screw bingo uh g10 machined out because you got the mechanism in here you're trying to make room for. And here it is. And yeah, it's kind of a no big deal deal, uh, Lucille. Because it just, spring comes right out of that hole there. And then uh, to really completely disassemble it, you got to take both sides, of course. Because you got to take both springs out. You got to take both liners out. So, uh See if we can push this hook out. Okay, there we go. So spring on one side, bingo. And then to completely take this out, you can see you have to remove the scale on the other side as well. So we're losing the screws out of this side here. They're dropping out along with the spacers. Uh, and then got to take this pivot completely out. See, it's got a little nylon piece there, probably to keep it from rotating. And then here we go. Uh, did we get you all the way off? Oh, we did now. Okay. More screws falling out everywhere. And there's the other side of the... Uh, G10, and then here's your here's your setup right here. We got spacers falling out, springs all over the place. But there's a spring on the other side. You just pop it out and take that off, and then the piston can come all the way out, which, you know, whatever you want to do, that's fine. And then there's your stop right here. Goes in both sides.
and it's all apart. There's your stop. There's your scales. Or liners. There's your liners. There's your washers. So here's the washers that are on the knife. And of course, these are bronze washers, but uh, I don't know what these are, and they're very flexible. Obviously, some kind of synthetic material is my guess. So we got our mess here. We got the screws for the one side uh, and the pocket clip there. Here's the pivot. Here's the liners. Here's the scales. Here's the spring for the back. Here's the spring for the front. There's the stop pin, the washers, the standoffs, and the screws for the front. So we got everything here. So I guess I could put this little spring right back in here for right now. Obviously, this piece it comes from the front. doesn't have any entree uh, except from the front. And it's squared off. So it must meet something here in the liner that is also squared off. And it looks like it's down here. So this is going to have to rotate down to go through and match up with the other side. So the flat goes through here where this part of the liner is flat and lines up right here. We have our blade stop, which goes back in. Uh, we have the synthetic, and I believe that was up against here. And then this one was next to the blade. Don't know if it really makes a difference or not. Then, of course, we have the blade. We have our standoffs. We have washers. Uh, we have the other liner. I centered up. Field Bro by Amir. Nice, lightweight sensible. I like it. It's a good knife. Check it out and check the mass drop out as well. That looks really interesting. Take care. You know what we do. We love them knives. So you guys stay sharp.